Have you ever heard those people, like people on TV that are like, oh, your data is more valuable than oil. And I'm like, are you fucking what? stupid? Like, yeah, let let me know when I can go to a gas station, you know, show them my my Pornhub history and get a free gallon of gas. Because believe me, as soon as I can do that, oh man, I'm just going to be rolling in free gas. I always top one except 33. I always fresh, never wear a dirty tee. Never drop a game, so I say GG. Master of cards, so they call me MC. I always top one except 33. I always fresh, never wear a dirty tee. Never drop a game, so I say GG. Master of cards, so they call me MC. Welcome everyone to the AC Podcast. We're back here. We've got ACP, that's me. We got our favorite guest, Matt. The only guest. <laughs> yeah, our favorite guest, Matt. And we got some, we got some great topics for you. We got some nice spicy topics. Uh, but before we get into those topics, I like to read my favorite comments from the previous podcasts. So be sure to leave a comment. I might read it off next week. But in our last week's episode, we talked about hentai and the evils of anime more generally. And Koma said, well, I mainly watch hentai because in hentai, there are just way more options than in regular porn. I don't even watch hentai to fap or for the sex, parentheses, I'm being serious. I actually prefer to watch hentai for the story, and those with a good story are kind of rare. Regular porn was never a thing for me, but I do understand your points. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm i not sure if this is like a troll comment. I mean, he says he's being serious, but regardless of whether it's a troll or not a troll, still a good comment. You know, yeah, we, we've got the right. obligatory, oh, I just watch hentai for the plot, man. You know, just like how I just read Playboy <laughs> for the articles, right? Exactly. <laughs> but, but he did say, he did say, I understand your point. So, you know. Who knows? He's like, yeah, I'm a filthy hentai addict. But you're right, hentai is kind of bad. Um, <laughs> and also, just for that last video, I, I, I want to mention something funny, which is that... Um, as you can see on this graphic here, 13.4% of my traffic for the last video came from people who used the YouTube search feature. And of that 13.4%, 62% found my podcast by typing in the word hentai. So, I don't know, like 7, 8% seven, or so of my total traffic came from people typing in the word hentai. Uh, no, another 2% came... I, hey, hold on. I have a question for you. Sure. I'm sorry. So, like, <laughs> what is it normally that that finds it from the search bar? I uh, it, it's it, it it's less usually. Usually, it's like I don't know, like you know, five to ten percent or something like that. Okay. Uh, but then, yeah, some people found it by searching hentai manga. Uh, some people found it by searching hentai podcast. And what <laughs> what what I love about this is YouTube also shows you like how much they interacted with your video upon viewing it. So the people who found the video by searching hentai only watched my, you know, almost hour-long podcast episode for an average of nine seconds. So <laughs> nine seconds was enough for them to go, oh, shit, no, oh, hen no, no hentai it. here, god damn it. You know, I'm, you know, I'm subscribed to you. I typed in hentai podcast, and I can't find you. So yeah, I mean, well, part of it is like the video is a little older by now, and the algorithm shows more recent videos. Um, or the yeah, okay, fair enough. But yeah, it's funny. You know, on one hand, I think some of my viewers are kind of like waiting for the goat format part and are just sort of like skipping the other two topics. But you know, some Maybe. people that like found the video by typing in hentai were probably like, "Oh, I really like this discussion of hentai. Why are they talking about Yu-Gi-Oh now?" <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't know. The average is nine seconds. So <laughs> well, sure. Well, that, that's the average. That's over an average of thirty-one views. They watched it for nine seconds. So um, it doesn't really break that down. It doesn't say like what the longest that they watched was. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's with all the podcasts. I'm sure there's like some people who maybe just find it by searching for something and are like 
Wait, why are they talking about Yu-Gi-Oh? I didn't come for this Yu-Gi-Oh shit. But anyways, uh, our three topics today. Uh, as usual, the first and third topic have been picked by the guest. The third topic is always good format related. We've got number one, um, evil tech companies. You know, are, are tech companies given too much credit for doing good? Or are they not given enough credit for doing good? That's our first topic. Second topic is oh. mine, and you know I've got another controversial opinion for you guys. And that is that I think grammar is elitist. And yeah, probably, probably. number three, we're going to be discussing the rise of solemn judgment in goat format. Um, what that means for the future. Uh, so yeah, so so go ahead. Let's let's dive right into it. Uh, Matt, why don't why don't you tell us about your thoughts on tech companies? Okay, well, first of all, this kind of started as, like, recently I got T-Bone, I got my car towed. I'm just going to, like, set this up real quick. So, sure. like, and, like, I don't know if you guys have ever had your car towed for any reason, but pretty much 100% of the time, like, they basically they basically just try to extort you so that you'll pay to get your car back. They charge you a storage fee, all this bullshit. And in that moment, it got me thinking, like, wow we really do praise some of these companies for doing the bare minimum. And like the example I use is <laughs> like when Amazon gave its workers $15 an hour for the first time. Like I remember people like, Oh my God. And then like people who are like, but they also did that like by cutting benefits and like, like people were really giving like tech companies, like tech companies in particular, but a lot of companies way too like way too much of a how do i say this way too much credit for doing what they should have been doing already basically yeah i mean i don't know i for me it's like i look at it the opposite way where it's i think a lot of these tech companies get like too much shit for things that don't really matter and it seems like no matter what they do there's a lot of people especially like you know particularly our age that are you know, a bit more left wing that just kind of think that, oh, any big corporation just m must be evil. And I'm not saying oh, yeah. that, like, I mean, obviously, the truth is somewhere in the middle. I mean, obviously, a company mostly exists to make a profit, and mm -hmm. I don't think we should really expect anything less. I mean, it's, in a way, I think, like, it, when we put too much pressure on private companies to do good things for society or the environment or for social equality, whatever, I think that kind of takes pressure off of our elected officials to do those things, right? Like at the end of the day, it's not it's not Google's job to make the world a better place, even though I believe their motto is literally like "Don't be evil." At the end of the day, it's That's it's really ironic. yeah, it's really it's really politicians' job to do that. So, I think oftentimes we kind of like misassign blame. Like, it's our Maybe. lawmakers that make the rules, and as long as companies are following the rules that were made for them, you can't really blame them if they don't like go above and beyond or whatever. Um. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I, think, I think there's some, like, TCG analogies, too, where people, like, hate on you for, like, playing a deck that's lame, but, like, if but if the rules say I can play a lame deck, then why would, you know, why would you expect me not to? If it wins, yeah. I mean, it, and, you know, I, I can, like, I'm kind of, like, that weirdo in the middle. Like, it seems like everyone, like you said, either has a huge problem with big companies or, you know, thinks they're God's gift to humanity. And it seems like me and you are like one of the some of the few people in our generation that are like we're like yeah the truth is somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I mean, but, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't. I really don't think there are that many people that like these big companies. Like, I think it kind of used to be like I don't know, maybe a decade ago, you'd see people on the right going like, "Oh, corporations are people. Corporations are great. Whatever." And then people on the left would be like. No, any company that's worth you know a half a trillion dollars or more is automatically bad. But these days, I think that's kind of a thing that's like nonpartisan. Like the left hates tech companies, and the right also hates tech companies, right? 
kind of for or different, kind of for different reasons. Like yeah. obviously, there's this whole like backlash against tech companies being too woke. That's coming from the right, and then the left thinks that these companies aren't woke enough. So what? I don't know. It's it seems like everyone doesn't doesn't like these tech companies. Well, I mean, there's other reasons people don't like tech companies. Uh, their level of wokeness, I'm, I assure you. Well, it's the last of my priorities, but I imagine most people don't care how much tech companies are broke or not broke woke. But yeah, yeah my I, mean, point... I, mean, I mean, there's there's other things too, but I I don't know. I think I mean there's different schools of thought. Like obviously, sort of like the classic like Milton Friedman view of <sighs> a firm is that you know, hey, a corporation only exists for the benefit of its shareholders. And then there's right. sort of like the newer school of thought that's no, a, a corporation should exist to change society for the better um Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day i think it's like i'm not saying it's like a hundred percent profit but it's like kind of 90 percent profit right i mean sure i mean but here's the thing right if you've made you know billions of dollars off of consumers workers whatever like extracting excess value don't you think at some point you should, at, at the very least, not necessarily like give back, not necessarily like give back to the whole society, but at the very least, give back to the people who are you know supporting your business, such as your employees, to your consumers. I mean, to I mean an it extent. depends. I mean, I hear people. Have you ever heard people say, "Oh, it's it's easier to be a CEO than it is to be a burger flipper at McDonald's"? Like, yeah, those people are ridiculous. Yeah, I go, okay, great. I mean, I guess every company should just. You know, hire just a hire a random person off the street to be their CEO. Um, but really, like, the problem that I have this mentality of, oh, you should, like, give back to workers. I'm not saying you should give back at all. And even, like, the company that I work for is, I mean, I've only been working f- for them for, like, a year and a half or so. But in that time, their messaging has been, you know, people over profit. And their actions have been pretty consistent with that. But at the same time, you know, look at obviously like the overwhelming majority of small businesses fail. Um, sure. and, and most of them even fail without like ever making a profit and to tell people like, Oh, you should, you should take on all the risk of being an entrepreneur, potentially bankrupt yourself in the process. Cause a lot of people are taking out, you know, third mortgages to start a company, but then sure. say, Oh, but, but by the way, if you're successful, you know, you don't get to like, reap all of the reward that i mean then then why would anyone ever start a company like oh i'm just gonna assume all of the risk but not reap any of the reward i mean for every jeff bezos in the world there's a thousand a thousand other people who tried to be jeff bezos but ended up going bankrupt instead sure and and you know those kind of things do happen um ah man but yeah like with with those, it's kind of hard to argue against that kind of th- kind of thing because it's like that's the thing that no one ever talks about when they're having this argument. Is like, okay, then you start a business if you want to be so woke. Why well, don't I own have money to take out a loan? Why well, want to go bankrupt? Exactly. And you know what? Most of the small business owners I know that tell me like I ask them, hey, what, do, what would you do to start a business? Most of them say don't. Yeah, I mean, it's but- definitely it is. You know, people talk about, I don't know, you know, crypto or small stocks being risky, but starting your own business is even riskier than that. Um, Starting is incredibly risky, yeah. Yeah, I mean, at least if I, like, buy a stock, the worst that can happen is it goes to zero. If you start a business, you can lose more than your initial investment, so... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I was just going to say that, you know, I, I also think it's... Some of the things that tech companies get shit for, in my opinion, like, just aren't real things. Like, the whole, oh, you know, this company has my data. Like, so what? Like, why would I... Like, okay, Google knows what toppings I like on my pizza. Like, who gives a shit? Well, Um, I I mean, that's kind of like... Oh, that's another thing, actually. Um, I'm sorry, like, some people are like... Like, I love the divide when it's like free speech versus why are you censoring my shit? And I'm like, dude, they're a private company. They can kind of control what they want on their platform. 
Yeah, but obviously, if you don't like their censorship, you can also leave the platform. I mean, exactly. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is I mean that's kind of like getting wading into a different issue because mm. you know technically we have laws in the books that say basically you know we have a law that protects um, internet companies from getting sued from things on their platform with the with the understanding that that's because that it is a public forum, right? So if I were to post something on Facebook, um, like say I were to post a terrorist threat on Facebook, right? Like, oh, I'm going to go bomb the White House. By the way, I'm not going to go bomb the White House, just to be I'm clear. About to say. But if I was, Facebook couldn't get sued for that because that's my speech, not theirs. But the argument is that, well, hey, if, if these companies like Facebook and Twitter are policing people's speech then they should be able to be sued for it. Right? So yeah. it's like they're, they're kind of trying to like have their cake and eat it too. Like, oh, we want to stop people from saying things that we don't like, but we also don't want to be sued for the things that people say. And that's a tightrope all on its own. Yeah, but I don't know. I, you know, there's all these people that are, you know, like, oh, yeah, you know... Google, Facebook, Apple, whatever, have my data, and that's, you know, so bad or whatever. But really, it's like, all they're using it for is just to serve you better ads. Like, if Facebook collects some data from my browser and uses that to determine, like, I shouldn't get tampon ads or whatever, like, to me, that's totally fine. Yeah, some people, some people, though, keep in mind, like, some people really, really, really don't want their data to be given out because they feel like, oh, well, if they get it and the government can get it and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, the government, I... like, already... So what if the government has your data? Like, that's what the government does. Oh, no, the government has my social security number! Can you believe it? <laughs> like, yeah, no shit they have your social security number, you fucking dumbass. <laughs> they know where I live! The government knows my address! <laughs> huh? I, can't. I mean, it's like... How long were you waiting to do that, by the way? Not... I mean, I wasn't waiting particularly long. But yeah, it's like... I don't know, it's just... I, I think people just, like, kind of assume the worst. Like, they think that... You know, the federal government, these tech companies are like some cartoon villain that's going to take your data well, and, I don't know, do something bad with it. Here's what I think people are worried about. And I think this is actually a legitimate worry when it comes to data collection. So, like, let's say you're doing something that is, like, that is legal, that is illegal, like, ish. Like, I know in Florida, um, like, pot is decriminalized. But you could still, even though, and this is a weird one, um, apparently if something's illegal in your state, or legal in your state, but illegal in the federal government, you can actually still be charged with it in federal court. Yeah, potentially, although it's... I mean, it's, it's pretty it's, rare. It doesn't really happen, but yeah. Well, I mean, it happened like, you know, seven or eight years ago with uh, when pot was just starting to become legal, like in California. Sure, I mean, I think Colorado was the first state to legalize it, but... Well, uh, medical marijuana. I'm sorry. California, I believe, had medical marijuana. Oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Like, the first time I went to San Francisco, I saw, like, all these billboards about, like, oh, ask your doctor if marijuana is right for you. I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's kind of weird. <laughs> I just, I just, I just want to see a bill. I just want to buy a billboard and then... Just put that on it. Ask your doctor if marijuana... No, literally, like, half the billboards in San Francisco were marijuana advertisements. Like, I'm not Ask even exaggerating. Marijuana is right for you. I bet now it's, like, 90%. <laughs> Who even buys billboard ads anyways? Uh, hillbillies and people think they, and people that think they work? I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know. I've, like... Have you ever heard those people, like, people on TV that are, like, Oh, your data is more valuable than oil. And I'm like, are you fucking what? stupid? Like, yeah, let let me know when I can go to a gas station, you know, show them my my Pornhub history and get a free gallon of gas. Cause believe me, as soon as I can do that, oh man, I'm just gonna be rolling in free gas. 
No, it's oh, like man. your data is worth actual pennies. Like I work for a tech company. I am a data scientist. Your data is worth jack shit. Maybe. So like I remember hearing like all the info about you that can be collected on like the fa- on like a Facebook page is worth $12 on a good day. I mean, maybe. I guess it depends on, like, what's on your page. I mean, maybe for some people. Yeah, um, yeah that's what I mean. Like, $12 for an ideal client on a good day. And, it, I mean, it depends on who you are. Like, I don't know, Bill Gates' data would probably be worth a lot more than my data because he has more money to spend on the things that you show him, right? Yeah, but, like, let's say, like, someone with your exact job also... um you know, someone like because you you don't spend a lot of money. You like hoard all your money, but yeah. like, um, but like someone who doesn't hoard all their money and someone who like lives paycheck to paycheck and makes one hundred ten grand a year or whatever, they would be also an ideal target for those ads as well. Yeah, I mean it. I mean it kind of depends. Like overall, you you know the old the old economics way of looking at something is. You know, what's something worth? Well, it's only worth what the free market is willing to pay for it. Right, and the free market is not willing to pay very much for your data. I mean, even, like, credit card numbers, you would think that credit card numbers are worth, like, a lot of money. But, like, there are these Russian sites where they sell credit card numbers, and you can buy a credit card number for, like, $5 a number. I've heard, uh, like, Social Security numbers, $4 a number. Yeah, I mean... Most people these days have, like, all these things like credit freezes and identity theft check, whatever. Yeah, like, I, I mean, it depends. There, You know, it, it depends on how good you are of a scammer and how and to what extent the other person is um, guarding their credit or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I, like, if I found out that, I don't know, if I found out that, 10 random people on the internet, like, had found my social security number, I'd be like, okay, that's that's unfortunate. And, and to this day, if you ever work in customer service or sales or a job where you need to get their social security number for anything, they're like, ah, I can't give you my social security number. I wish I could use that. I wish I could use that as a rebuttal. Like, dude, your, your social security dollars worth, four, so, excuse me, your social security number is worth $4 on a good day. I don't want it. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that can be scary about a social security number is that it's used to verify so many things. Um, so if it's like, hey, I know someone's social security number, maybe I won't like take out a loan in their name because that doesn't work as well as it used to. But maybe I use it to recover the password to some account that's valuable for whatever reason. Yeah, okay. But yeah, I'm... Uh, I don't know. I, these in our society today, I think there's like all this technophobia. You know, there's people going all like, "Oh, Google has my data. Google has my data," yep. and it's like, <laughs> no one, no one gives a shit. They, they, they really don't. I mean, all they're trying to do, basically, Facebook, Google, Twitter, all these companies, they have the exact same business model. Yes, they profit off your data. But they do it by serving you better ads, right? Um, and 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 that's it. It's just all about ad targeting. You know, someday I'm probably going to be um, paying for ads for my goat format simulator, and obviously I don't want to like show those ads to some random person who doesn't even know what Yu-Gi-Oh is, right? That's why we have ad targeting. Um, it it makes the world an objectively better place. Sure. So, um, I mean, and you know, I can, I can honestly see both sides of that argument. Um, like for me, I've like, the only reason that I'm not more, like, I used to be kind of on the part of, oh, good data, but like these days I'm kind of like, yeah, they're going to get my data anyways. Like it's, it's kind of like to protect I mean, it's it. It's not that they're going to get it data. anyways. It's that I want them to have my data. I would rather be served an ad that's actually relevant to my interests then be Why served an ad for something that there's a zero percent chance that I buy. Your auto, your we need to talk to you about your extended warranty on your car. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anyways, uh, I, 
people and, people get sort of like used cars and shit. It's funny. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, well, let's move on to the next topic because we kind of yeah. we went went a bit over time on this one. But yeah, the topic that I picked is that grammar is elitist, and let me explain what I mean by this. You know, as we all know, America was founded as a democracy that has freedom of speech. And when there I'm talking about freedom of speech, I don't mean that, you know, I can insult the president without going to jail, or I can say that Jesus isn't real or whatever. You know, I literally mean freedom of speech. That people can talk the way they want. So, you know, I can say... My mom and I went to the store, or I can say me and my mom went to the store. And regardless of which one I say, people are going to know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I just, I just feel like, you know, the, the, the whole purpose of language is, is to be understood. And when someone knows what I mean, but points out like, oh, you said something that's grammatically incorrect... In my opinion, they're just an asshole. Yeah, I mean, I, I could see it both ways. Like, if you said something and I didn't know what you said, though, and I have to correct you, I think that's actually... And then you call me an asshole, I'm like, no, you're just an idiot. But if well, you say, I know, like... I mean, I mean, my grammar is, like, definitely better than the average person's. So if someone is pointing out that I gr made a grammatical mistake, it's something incredibly minor. That, you know, like the whole thing where you say to your English teacher, hey, can I use the bathroom? And then they say, I don't know. I don't know. Can, can you? you? <laughs> like, you know what I mean, you dumb piece of shit. Like, that, that's an example of them just being an asshole. And no, no, yeah, like that, that kind of stuff, like, I kind of like it as a joke. But like, after the, it's kind of like, you can't tell the same joke a million times or it's not funny anymore. And so Right. I mean it's just it's just a way to like make people feel bad for not talking correct. And you know, to to go ahead and bring race into this conversation, you know, the, the people who have always made the correct English grammatical rules or whatever have been rich white men and grammar is mainly just a way for rich white men to tell poor people and minorities that oh, you're not as good at speaking as the rest of us. You know, obviously, they're like in in certain communities or whatever. There are different ways of talking, but regardless of what part of America I'm in, I'm gonna understand what they mean. So, well, like if I say, like, well, like, well, hmm. yeah, you know, I guess there is some slang. I was I was gonna make an argument like, um, there's like some slang that makes no sense unless you know the slang. But I was like thinking like. You know, there's like slang words that are now in the English dictionary, like y'all, or 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 here's a good one, uh, Seinfeld, yada yada yada. That's actually in the dictionary now. I didn't even know that yada 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 originated from Seinfeld. That, but yeah, I mean, it, realize that language is literally a democracy, right? Like as far as how people say things, like they're obviously not like going into a, a booth and voting on it but they kind of are voting on it. Like, if everyone decides that a word is going to be used a certain way, then that's just the correct way of using the word, right? So, sure. I don't know. I mean, I mean, language has evolved over time. I mean, even in the last hundred years or so, like, language has evolved significantly. And if you go back much farther than that, if you, like, read some English book that was written 300 years ago, a lot of shit you're going to be like, what is, what, what? like, what, what, what does this what? even mean? And, yeah, I mean, there's just certain things that used to be considered grammatically incorrect but are now standard. Like, Matt, have you ever heard that, like, oh, impact isn't supposed to be used as a verb? Um. What? So, so for example, you know, going based on sort of the strictly grammatical correct way of saying things, if you were to be hit by a hurricane and you said, the hurricane impacted me greatly that would be grammatically incorrect because you're using the word impact as a verb. The correct way of saying it would be the hurricane made a great impact on me. Really? So impacted is technically correct? No, impacted is not correct. That's, that's what I said. I'm sorry. Did I yeah. Say that? Something like that. So again, that's just based on sort of the 
traditional usage of the word. But obviously enough people have started using it as a verb that it basically is a verb. So, I mean, you can say that using it as a verb is incorrect all you want, but if everyone decides it's a verb now, it's a fucking verb now. That's just that's just how language is supposed to work. I suppose you do have a point, actually. Um, that actually does make a lot of sense, more sense than I care to admit. And, and I mean, there's just, like, other things where, you know, like, a, a good example is who versus whom. You know, oh yeah there's no there is no reason to have two different words other than to just make fun of someone when they use it wrong like we can just use, good reason, though. You gotta give them that. i mean we can just use who a hundred percent of the time and that is kind of what most people do right and i couldn't tell you off the top of my head what the correct usage is um you know i don't know if you know, you're supposed to say who am i speaking to or are you supposed to say to whom am i speaking with or something like that you know I don't know. And then there's, like, some people who, like, use the word whom when you're not supposed to to, like, make themselves sound smarter, which is, like, just even worse. They just think <laughs> it... I mean, that was kind of like a meme for a while. Like, are you familiar with the whomst meme? Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, that's just basically, you know, making fun of, you know, people who, I don't know are trying to use, like, fancy words to sound smarter. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know. But I, I guess I don't know. I guess gotta agree. I just think, in general, like, there's a reason that they're called grammar Nazis, right? It's because they stand against true American democracy, right? America, yeah. you know, there's a reason that we don't talk like those British fucks, right? There's a reason that we aren't right, putting so extra British U's fuck. in our words and all that nonsense. It's because we realize that language is by and for the people. You know, you realize the number of times and you say things like this. Don't let some, you know, nerd in Harvard tell you how to speak. Okay? That, that was a lot more inspirational of a message than I thought it would be. I, I must grant you that. Don't let them tell you how to speak. We are We are the ones with the power here. We have the power. Ah! If if uh, if all of society collectively decides to stop saying whom, we can stop saying whom. You know, if all of us decide that, hey, we don't need to distinguish between good and well, we can just use good all the time, then it'll be for the better. Our language will be easier. But anyways, sure. let, 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 let's move on to our third topic. Which is you wanted to talk about solemn judgment in oh, joke format. Yeah. Alright, so tell us about solemn judgment. Oh man. So like I remember and there is still, still some truth to this, but I remember the days of people being like, and you included, being like, Oh man, uh solemn isn't very good because you have to waste a lot of life points to use it. It's only good in this kind of deck and only against these kind of decks. Whereas these days, I would call it, I would go as far as to call it like a semi staple. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't call it a semi staple. Well, like, like, I'm seeing decks like Thunder Dragon Chaos playing it, and in some cases, those decks are doing pretty well. Yeah, I mean, but I think they're doing well in spite of the fact that they're playing Solemn Judgment, not because of the fact they're playing Solemn Judgment. I mean, some, I mean, it, it depends on the list. Like, when I was interviewing Johnny Lee, uh, slash tap, he was like, yeah, I decided to play Psalm because I thought it would be good, but, like, looking back, I'm not sure if it was the right choice. Um, yeah, but didn't he, like, top three? Yeah, he got he got third, but he was like, yeah, it, it was fine, but it wasn't as good as I would thought. It, it wasn't as good as he thought it would be. Um, right. I mean, overall, my opinion hasn't changed much, which is that I really think a lot of GOAT format players are undervaluing life points in general. Um, sure. And like, um, so what do you think is going to be the punishing factor where we go back to playing more, uh, uh, like, because like, like, you know, back in the day, for example, it didn't make a lot of sense to like, just fire off your MSTs. And I remember us talking about like, now you got to wait for the power spells most of the time, unless you have a really good follow up. 
Like these days, mm-hmm. like people are firing off MSTs and stuff like that a little more aggressively because uh, I don't know, maybe. Well, I mean, like I mean, it's defense. I mean, bad players will just activate MST like as soon as they draw it. They well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking. I'm not talking about bad. I'm talking about good players and bad players alike. Like in general, people are firing off their MSTs. I'm talking about universally more aggressively, but more aggressively because there's no like call the haunted or premature to hit very often anymore. Neither of those cards see nearly as much play as they used to. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. Um, yeah. So, like, basically, when I, like, because people's back rows aren't, you know, call the haunted and scapegoats anymore, we're seeing a lot more, like, soccer, or not soccer etsu armor. Well, yeah, I mean, we see a lot of soccer etsu armor and solemn judgments. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, overall, I think just M- MST into no follow-up is still... Not good. Pretty, no, yeah, not, not what you want to be doing. Um, uh, I mean, I totally agree. I mean, for a while, you saw some Chaos decks just... Like, not maining MST at all. I mean, I guess you still see that a little, but it's not as common. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, Psalm Judgment, I, I I did try, like, the one Psalm Judgment in Goat Control, and then in the most recent tournament, Geist D uh, also played one Psalm Judgment in Goat Control. And I think that could work because obviously the I mean, this might not sound super intuitive to some people, but the fewer copies of a card you play, the later you'll draw it on average. Well, yeah. Um, and obviously, some judgment is better in the late game than the early game. So I, I would. I would never play three Psalm Judgment in a deck like Thunder Dragon Chaos. Um, I don't know, just because I, 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 I don't, I don't see a reason to. Like, there's not anything specific that I'm trying to protect, and I, I don't know. I just don't want to pay half my life most of the time. I mean, control decks are the decks that use their life points as a resource. Whereas, you know, aggro decks, not so much. Yeah, like, aggro decks. Now, that's actually one of the reasons why Solemn's gotten so popular. It's because we're seeing way more aggro, and, uh, I mean, not, I mean, we're still seeing a good amount of control, but not as much as, it used to be, like, 90% control. Now it's, like, 40% control, or something like that. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't keep tabs in the meta like Alan does, so. I mean, I'd say more than half of the meta is still control decks, but... Yeah, I mean, obviously Goat Control in particular sees nowhere near as much play as it used to. But most of that ground has just been gained by other control decks. Well, yeah, like, like I remember you're, we always, this is always a fun one to talk about, but, like, Goat Control we always thought was unbeatable. Now it turns out it's actually pretty easy to beat. You well, just I, gotta mean, I, I never thought it. it was unbeatable. Well, we, I mean, when I say unbeatable, I mean the best deck. Like, there's... I never thought it was the best reason. deck. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. When? Like, well, when, like, the format revival was a thing. I mean, maybe for, like, the first, I don't know, cup. you know. I mean, it depends. Like, once we started, I mean, maybe, like, okay, so back when, like, people were playing with Xerian Universe, I thought Goat Control was the best deck, but that was kind of, like, totally different meta. So, like, ex- okay, so then exactly, like, like go ahead. After after people stop playing with Xerian, I I almost never played Goat Control, right? I mean, well, yeah, for, you for a while, chaos. yeah, I mean, for a while I played Goat Control because I didn't really know what else to play. But like once I figured out that there were other decks in the format, it was like, yeah, why would I want to play Goat Control? Sure, um, but yeah, you know, another thing is like. And once once Detox Goat Control caught on in particular, I was one of like the biggest haters of that deck. I was like, yeah, this what? deck's overrated as fuck. When you say Detox Goat Control, like, like you're just talking about just standard Goat Control, right? For the viewers who don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's like double Air Knight, um, you know, two Goats, three Meta, two Soccer right, Bombers, right, two right. Dust Tornadoes, you know, you Premature Call, Tribe, 
two Sukiomis, two Magical Merchant, that kind of deck. Right, okay. And I mean, even way back when I did my uh, top eight misunderstood cards in GOAT format, Magical Merchant was one of the things that I talked about in that video. I was like, hey, this card isn't as good as most people think it is. And I ended up being right. Right, I mean... Mm. So yeah, I mean, I mean, like... I mean usually... And, and now, like, I kind of... Now that these Chaos variants are, like, the most popular, I kind of have the same attitude towards them that I had towards Goat Control, and that was the most popular deck. It's not that I think Chaos is bad, but I do think it's overplayed, and I think all the people, like, complaining about it are doing so without... Um, sufficient justification. Like, Chaos isn't Maybe. any more unbeatable today than Goat Control was two years ago. True, but like, it's it's one of the things, like, I, I always wonder if it's a testament of, um, I always wonder if it's a testament of, like, is it just the way the meta's evolved, or is it more of, like, um, just we realize it wasn't quite that good. Like, because, like, in some cases, the meta just shifts. But in some cases, we just realize it's not it's not quite that good. And what do you think happened with Goat Control in particular? Um, well, I may have talked about this in other videos, but... I mean, Goat Control didn't really have a lot of great matchups, and eventually people just figured it out and then stopped playing it. Because what happens is... is you know, if a deck is, for example, I don't know, like a large percentage of the meta, like if Goat Control is 50% of the meta, even if it, even if it's like not a very good deck, it'll probably still get a lot of slots in the top eight just because of like how probability works, right? So if Goat, you know, if Goat Control was half the meta and Goat Control was an average deck, then you would expect it to get four out of the top eight slots, sure. right? If it got more than four slots, then you'd go, okay, maybe Goat Control's a little better than average. If it got less than four spots, you would say maybe it's a little worse than average. Sure. So what sure. happens is, you know, Goat Control will be half the meta. It'll get four out of the top eight spots. And then someone looking at the top eight deck list will go, oh, half the top eight decks were Goat Control. It must be the best deck. And then because of that, people will continue playing Goat Control. And then it'll continue getting four out of the top eight spots. Uh, and that was like, kind of what yeah. happened for a while. If you look at some of these old deck lists for tournaments, you'd be like, oh yeah, Goat Control was like four out of the top eight spots. But that's because half the meta was Goat Control. It wasn't because Goat Control was like a really good deck. It was an average deck. That just happened to be really popular. Yeah, it just happened to be really popular. So there's kind of a feedback loop where a deck is popular, therefore it's most of the top eight, and because it's most of the top eight, it continues to be popular. And it takes a very long time to reverse that. You just kind of have to just keep pushing their shit in repeatedly for years on end for people to get the message. Sure, no, no, I, I, I hear you there. And you know what? Now that you mention it, I just want to think I didn't really... I suppose there's some truth to that. Now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, okay. like it's one of those things I just never thought about personally because just like, well, you know, everyone played Go Control it was the best deck, and I even it's kind of crazy that even I fell into this kind of thinking. Like, obviously, it's taking all these top spots the best deck. Although I remember in one specific tournament, now that I'm thinking about it, and this was like I think the turning point of Go Control. Half of the players played Go Control, and almost no one. Almost no one topped with, I think there was one GOAT deck that topped, and it was like 25 out of like 44 decks played GOAT Control, and not a single GOAT Control topped. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the, obviously there were other events, and I, if I remember the event, or if one of you guys remembers the event, please tell me. But like, I remember that, like, and as the first time, uh, huh, maybe GOAT Control is beatable. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely beatable. 
Um, and, and like I said, I, I still think Chaos is beatable. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm not complaining about Chaos at all. I mean, most of the people... Again, there's a lot of similarities to Goat Control where a lot of the Goat Control pilots didn't really know what they were doing. And mm. the same thing is true with Chaos today. A lot of the Chaos players don't really know what they're doing. So. so so, do you think that Solemn being popular is correlated with uh, Chaos being popular? Uh, I mean, yes, I think it is, but I don't think it should be. It's like so. So, what do you think? Um, I mean, so what I'm, do you think needs to happen for chaos to become less popular, and and solemn to become less popular by extension? Well, I mean, I think solemn could become less popular even if chaos still remains popular. Because the last event, you know, Chris didn't play any solemns; he got first. Um, Slash Tab did play three solemns, but he said, "Well, if I had to go back, maybe I wouldn't." So that's basically two out of the top three players saying, okay, you know, Solemn probably not the best choice in this deck. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Right, but but the whole we'll point, you're the expert. You need to... <laughs> I can't, like, the thing is, is, like, I can, I can say what's rational, but just because something is rational doesn't mean it'll happen. You raise a valid point. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I could say, hey, if if the player base were rational, here's what the ripple effect would be, but you can always guarantee that's not what's going to happen, because most people just play whatever they want to play. Like, they're not, you know, they, they're not really putting that much effort into it. I mean, this isn't a game like Magic the Gathering or even Poker, where, like, people play it for a living. This is just a format that people play for fun. And because yeah. of that, there's not very much incentive to, like, do what's you know quote unquote optimal yeah um although one of the things that's really different about um you know goat format and magic is with magic if you hate a certain format unless you are a pro player you can probably avoid that format at least to some extent like if you hate standard you could just drop into modern for a little while but like if you're a pro Magic player, then you have to play the standard season. You got to play the modern season. You got to play if there's a legacy event. You got to play that because you know it's just the way it is. I mean, in Magic, you don't really have to play legacy anymore. Legacy is like one Grand Prix a year, and you can just not go to that Grand Prix. Oh, okay. I thought they still had like. Man, that's so sad. I love legacy. Yeah, it is. Magic. I I like legacy too. Although it also, I also think it kind of like got worse in the last five years or so. Well, um, just because there's more combo decks, or what? I, no, if anything, the opposite. Like, Wizards, like, in my opinion, they banned, like, too many cards. Interesting. But, so, yeah, I, I mean... We can talk about that on another podcast. I'm just, like... I'm, that's kind of... That's not the responses I usually hear when we talk... When I talk to people about Legacy... <laughs> So I'm a little bit surprised there. Excuse me. Yeah, I mean, like, like I think in, I think in Legacy they shouldn't have banned Treasure Cruise. Really? Yeah, it was, it was fine. I played in that format. I didn't even play Treasure Cruise, and I still shit on people. But like, wasn't like Red Red Blue Delver became like I remember. I also remember that format, and I also played in that format. And there, there, there are plenty. Blue there are plenty of decks that could beat Red Blue Delver. There were, but they weren't popular at the time, and I'm not. But they probably, I will agree with okay. you on this. But they probably, they probably banned it too soon. Now, I do agree with you there. They probably did ban it too soon. I Man, I don't think they should have banned Sensei's Dividing Top either. That one was ridiculous. Well, I don't think it was ridiculous, but I don't know. I mean, to me, like the thing that made Legacy unique was that. Like, for a while at least, like, it really took a lot for a card to get banned. Like, it just... Like, if if a deck, like, took, I don't know, maybe seven out of eight spots at a Legacy event, then Wizards would be like, okay, we need to ban something in this deck. Or we need to... We, or, no, no, that would be, we need to talk about it. Yeah, but, like, but short of that, like, for a while, like, cards just didn't really get banned in Legacy. And now, like, did they even ban, like, Deathrite Shaman in Legacy now? They did. Um... I, I had mixed feelings about that one. 
I mean, when I played Legacy, like, Death Rate Shaman was, like, definitely good, but, like, most decks didn't play it. Like, it was probably played in, like, less than 10% of decks. Uh, I think I think it was one of those things that became, like, more ubiquitous as time went on. Like, it kind of started as, like, a something you play in, like, Yeah, they had Dark of Deaths in Legacy? Are you kidding me? They made wait. Cloud Post in Legacy? Oh, no, that's Modern. Sorry. I was like, wait, how are these cards banned? Then I realized I was looking at the wrong fan list. I was like, I was like uh, how is Cloud Post banned in Legacy? <laughs> Some of these cards wow. I haven't even heard of. Hold on. Oh, wait. That's how fucked up the game is now. <laughs> like, I know we're kind of going way off topic. Yeah, then they um, banned, like, Oko, Thief of Crowns. How is, like, a three-mana Planeswalker banned in Legacy? All right, we definitely uh, are going off topic. But, like, but to be fair, like, man, I, I think Oko, Thief of Crowns is going to be my topic for next week. How about that? Well, I don't know, maybe. I don't know, I just, <laughs> I just think it, Legacy just banned way too many cards. Well, there's some other yeah. Planeswalker that's banned in Legacy, too. What is it? Red and six. Oh yeah, no, that had a good reason. That had a good reason. I promise you that had a good reason. <laughs> I promise you that one had a good reason. Okay, why? Because I'm reading this card of like, how is this card even good? Card's insane, dude. Card's insane. Like, you With know what? what? We'll talk about it. We'll talk uh, f any fetch land. It like any like cycle land. Any. Um, Have you ever heard of also, Life from Below? Also, no. But here's the thing. It also it's like. It also shuts down a lot of like the turn one plays in the format. Like, I guess people, I guess people played this card in lands, right? Lands, it, well, not just lands. I mean, it was making a lot of like mid range decks really good. It was basically mid range decks. Any... We're talking about legacy. There's no such thing as a good mid range deck. <laughs> like, what, whatever. Like, point is, is that like red and six became. Like so ubiquitous that like I don't know. I think we should just like ban player. unban a lot of legacy cards. We can unban no, I, Hermit Druid. Yeah. We can unban fucking Goblin Recruiter for all I care. We can unban yeah. Yeah, something like Gush. I think we can unban that. You can't unban Gush. Are you fucking out of your mind? Okay, like the other ones. Oh man, they're guard. they're gonna draw two cards. What will I do? Like I said, yeah, I, I don't. Even, I don't even think. I don't even think Treasure Cruise needed to be banned. And Gush is probably worse than Treasure Cruise. Gush? What? Oh, Gush is Gush is free. Zero mana. It's not free. You got to return two islands to your hand. Zero mana. That's the important part. Okay. Who cares? As long as. I mean, as long as, you know, you're not doing, like, Gush plus Fast Bond, because Fast Bond's banned in Legacy, as long as you're not doing something crazy like that, card isn't that good. Like, you've ever played, like, Gush and Cube Draft? Card sucks. You're right, actually. You know, now I'm thinking about it. Mm. But, like, keep in mind, I'm also thinking about, like, man, Treasure Cruise being unbanned, too. Man, that's good. That's gonna be some nasty blue decks going on. And also, like most of the blue decks that would want to play Gush don't want to have more than two lands in play, anyways. So it's like they play the third land and then they like pick it up and then they put it back with their brainstorm. Okay, good for them. Like you don't see how that could be a, like a huge problem. Not really. I mean, my view is unless there's unless a legacy deck is regularly killing people on turn one, we should allow it. I mean, there's other ways to make a game broken than to kill people on turn one. Okay, I'm sure there are. I was saying, like... Even, like, balance. We can unban that card. Who cares about balance? I don't know. Maybe uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that one. I, I, don't, oh, I, don't, I don't know about balance. Actually, that's funny. I, I'm kind of going the other way. I'm like, you know, balance is just removal at the end of the day. Yeah, even, like, <laughs> even like Mind Twist. Why is Mind Twist banned in Legacy? Ritual, ritual, bind twist. I don't know, but he paid three cards. Who cares? Yeah, it's like well, then, okay, then you're, you're to, using yeah. huh? But then why is him to Torok legal? Fuck, man. Yeah, like there's a lot of things that don't make sense. Mental misstep. That's another card that I don't think should be banned in Legacy. Uh, no, that card should definitely be banned in Legacy. Disagree. Uh, are you kidding me? Like you're not gonna kill someone on turn one with mental misstep, so it's fine. That's. 
You're just trolling me now. No, I'm not. I seriously think every legacy card, if it doesn't help, if it doesn't kill your opponent on turn one, it should be legal. I think there's that... some exceptions. Like I guess Skull Clamp doesn't kill your opponent on turn one, but that card should probably stay banned. That makes no sense. You. <laughs> That makes no sense. Oh, Shaharazad should definitely be unbanded Legacy. Really? You're trolling me. You're no. trolling me. What's wrong with sub games? What do you got against sub games? What do you got against sub games? Uh, how about like I'll be the dom, like, you be the sub. Not, what do you got against sub games? <laughs> now, first of all, no. Second of all, <laughs> um, second of all, like. Yeah, one sub game is fine. You know what's not fine? Infinite sub games. And that's a thing you can do. I mean, not not reliably. And even if you could... Okay, infinite sub games, so what? I... I mean, I I'm remember... Saying, like, like there were some format. things that used to be banned in Legacy. Like, didn't they unban that, like, one dragon that makes infinite mana with, like, a revival? You know what I'm talking about? World Gorger Dragon. Yeah. yeah, World Gorger Dragon. I remember people saying, oh, if you unbanned World Gorger Dragon, like, that would just be broken. And then they unbanned it, and it's, like, not even good. Well, like, there's diff there's a difference, like, there's a difference in, like, there's there's different reasons to ban a card. Like, World Gorger Dragon, yeah, I agree. Like, the card's not good. And I didn't even see why it was banned in the first place. It's not, like, like, it's yeah. It's because those people, like, are just scared shitless of anything that could go infinite. To an extent, I think there's, like, kind of the same thing in Yu-Gi-Oh, where it's, like, Butterfly Dagger Elma is, like, banned in Yu-Gi-Oh, and if they unbanned it, it literally wouldn't even be playable. Well, but, sure. Unless there's, like, some combo with some newer card that, like, I'm not aware of. But I don't think there is. Maybe. Uh, well, here's another thing. Um... With uh, with mental mis uh, no, we'll talk about mental misstep later. <laughs> We've already gone so far off topic. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's fine. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. Unless, hey, uh, we'll record the rest of it, and if you people want to hear it, like we'll we'll have like a Dropbox link or something. I mean, the the only annoying thing about mental misstep, in my opinion, is that mental misstep can counter mental misstep. Uh, that's actually one if, of the reasons. <laughs> if mental misstep was like errated to say counter target spell with converted mana cost one other than mental misstep, then I think you could easily allow it in the format. Uh, yeah, I mean, like one of the things. But like, that makes but the really fact cool. that I, but but I will say, like in general, like one of the worst examples of bad card design is when a card is a counter to itself. That is like that can lead to some like really bad metas like if you go ponder other guy goes misstep you go misstep you go misstep. so there you just admitted you just admitted that all right well that's that's but that's like I, okay i will admit the fact that it can counter itself makes it kind of bad card design but i i still don't necessarily think it should be banned and again if for some reason they gave it narada that it couldn't counter itself then i think you could definitely unban it Maybe. I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously that'll never happen. But the jury is out. You never know. Wonder if you could unban Necropotence in Legacy. <laughs> Maybe. Well, no, no. Having four, no way. Um, having one, I don't know. Possibly. If you wanted to restrict Necropotence, maybe. But I, I think. Aren't you I just realize that, like, when the card was banned, there weren't like a ton of splashable ways to kill it. Like, decks play shit like Abrupt Decay and whatnot now. Um, I think you might be right. Yeah, actually, you might be around that. But still, like, that's gonna, like... Whenever you allow a card like that, you also allow, um... People... You also, like, kind of force the meta towards more removal, which... I'm not saying it's a bad hey, thing, Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, as long as people aren't killing each other on turn one, I think they should, they should pretty much unban it. I mean, I, I am certainly on team unban cards rather than ban cards. Like... Man, remember how long it took to get Stoneforge Mystic unbanned? Stoneforge was uh, never banned in Legacy. In Modern, it was. I'm sorry, I was talking about Modern. Oh yeah, they did bring it back. Well, I remember, I like, there's an old video that I had where, like, it was kind of like a meme video. It was like, control player mad at Modern bannings. Did you ever watch that video? 
I have no idea. What most you're people, about. most people thought it was serious, but like I was kind of making it as a joke. It was like when Modern was like just announced, and like they just banned a million blue cards, and the video is just me bitching about it. Uh, like his cards, yeah, like I was I, like, I, I was like, Ancestral Vision, we don't need to ban that card. Jace the Mind Sculptor, we don't need to ban that card. And I basically just went down the list and was like. Yeah, every blue card on this list doesn't need to be banned. And of course, like, now all those cards aren't oh, wait, banned. I remember, I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Now I remember it. Um, no, no, yeah. And then you're like, okay, I understand if you're going to ban Jace the Mind Sculptor, but come on, Ancestral Vision. Oh, Mental Misstep. Come on, man. You know, like. Well, even like Ancestral Vision, is that card, like, even playable in modern anymore? Like, I think it is. I think I it's think playable, it is, but it's not, but... like, super common, right? It's it's not broken, but it's good. Yeah, it's, I think. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's probably. I, keep in mind, neither, neither of us play Magic anymore. I, I, I just all right. I just hope that like all the comments for this video are just people talking shit about my Magic opinions. <laughs> They're gonna be like, "God damn, I'm glad you don't play Magic." <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we're pro we're already over, and like the yeah, last we're, twenty we're minutes, over a lot. we're way over, and. Yeah. Like, are you going to show me something for your thing today? Your What yeah. new developments you've come up with on your uh, dual sim? Cause I think, we, I really think we could unban Mana Drain and Legacy. Honestly, Just, probably. Yeah. Alright. So yeah, I don't really have anything to show for the dual sim today, because like, I just didn't... Oh, come on. No, I mean, I, um... Like, I did do stuff in the last week, but not stuff that like mostly just back end stuff and like minor fixes because thinking about coding is like the larger your code base gets the more time you have to spend on like sort of little things like making sure that your code is well maintained um so a lot of it's just like reorganizing shit just to make sure that you know we don't end up with spaghetti code so yeah sure so so yeah as far as uh as as far as that goes, I don't I don't really have have much to uh, to show off. So so yeah, I mean, do you got anything else to say, Matt, or should I sign us off here? Yeah, we've, yeah, we've already tied it off, and we've kind of got in like a All personal right. vendetta for a second. But yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to smash the bell and subscribe to the like button. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll see you all next week. <laughs>